Let's look at Dynamic EQ. This is another powerful and wonderful tool in the mastering stage. Um, this is pretty much a secret weapon of a lot of mastering engineers. And it's not often used, but personally I find it a wonderful tool to deal with specific problems. For example, if there is one element of the song that is too loud, your options would be multiband compression, EQ, or dynamic EQ, which is pretty much a combination of both. Um, for example, right, say I had a hi-hat that was too loud in the mix. I could go back and ask the producer, would you mind turning the hi-hat down and it would benefit the overall track? Or I could try this out. And what this does is apply EQ, but only whenever the audio crosses a threshold. So if you remember, we were talking about the in, in the dynamic range video about whenever something crosses that threshold then it's affected by the the ratio of reduction or enhancement that you choose so if i had a, a loud hi-hat something which was too loud i would set a threshold so that any time the hi-hat comes in and passes that threshold i could then reduce the the gain of that frequency specifically by a specified amount it sounds more complicated than it is if you're not familiar with this in this instant uh, instance i have a song here from silicon soul called smokestack which is out on soma records um now i found that there was a little bit of a harsh frequency at 11k 11.786 so in this circumstance what I have done what I'll show you here it's it's on the hi-hat basically it just sounds a tiny bit harsh it's quite a nice high end as well so I don't want to just use a standard EQ and and take cuts out of the high end just for this frequency this one specific pinpoint frequency so the dynamic EQ that I'm going to use is by Brainworks. It's a mid-side dynamic EQ as well. We'll discuss that in a minute. I pinpointed my frequency. You can do this by turning the, the threshold right up and boosting to see where the problem is and then sweeping about and, and, and recognizing, oh, I don't like this frequency. This is what needs to be removed. Now, in this circumstance, I found the frequency that I want to remove. And it only plays when the hi-hat's playing. So, what I'm going to do now is press this solo button. So this will indicate what I'm going to be reducing. Now, I'll lower my threshold at the problematic frequency, which is here. You can see this is starting to move. And we begin to start hearing what the dynamic processing is removing. So this is the sound that you're hearing now is the frequency that's being removed. And you can see it's only targeting the hi-hat. This is because it's in the right frequency range and the hi-hat's a little bit loud. So I can specifically pinpoint this frequency. Now if I switch it off solo, you can see here that it's addressing the hi-hat and only the hi-hat. Now whenever I'm in the breakdowns and so on, and there's no hi-hat, it's not working at all. It has absolutely no effect. Likewise here when there's no hi-hat, it has no effect. So this is a much more versatile way of removing a problematic frequency than just surgical EQ because it targets only the specific overbearing frequency that you decide. Here again with the hi-hats in, it's taking a little bit out of that harsh hi-hat. You can also link this so if you feel that it's not just in the mid-channel 
it's actually in the sides as well. You can apply some reduction in the sides too. You can do this linked or independently. So it's an amazing tool for specific problem solving. You could also use a multiband compressor and set it up in the high end and it will do, it will do a similar thing. But that's not as as sharp as as this particular little cut that I have. I've got a very very narrow cue and it's removing a specific problem that I've identified. So Again, more options as a mastering engineer can only be a good thing if they're used wisely and if you use them respectfully of the original audio and, and don't just use them uh, with with crazy settings just for the sake of it. This, um, I would only I would only take this EQ and apply it to my, my processing chain if I had a specific goal in mind that static EQ wouldn't achieve. Otherwise, I would stick with static EQ. Say, for example, if the whole high end was was too overbearing for the entire song, I would just use a standard static EQ such as this, the Fab Filter Pro Q. If, however, there is a problematic frequency, this is a good option. Um, used wisely, of course. You can also use this to enhance, say, a weak kick drum. With the same principles, it's not just about cutting out problematic frequencies. You can also use it to to boost a weak kick drum and have that boost only occur when the kick drum's playing. So we switch to boom mode here. This is our resonant, f our, our, our frequency that we're searching for. And again, start by turning down the threshold until you see some movement. And what it's doing is sucking out some energy in the low mids and boosting some energy in the subs. And you can see that it's only occurring when the kick's playing. So it's not just an overall boost of the low end. It's not as simple as just slapping on a, a boost such as this, which would apply to, to everything. It's targeting a specific element of the song. In this case, the kick drum. So that gives you another tool to add to your, your box that, that you can, that you can apply to solve specific problems in mastering. So for example, when would I use this? If I receive a song that has a nice sounding bass line but a weak kick and if I can set my threshold appropriately so it's only targeting that kick, then this could really save me from, from overemphasizing the whole low end if I just want to target the, the kick drum. In a nutshell, that's Dynamic EQ. I hope that was useful. You have been listening to Connor Dalton from Glowcast Audio Mastering. It's been my pleasure to do these tutorials for Future Music Magazine. So I hope they were helpful. Take care and hopefully talk to you again soon.